I am going to talk about uh, cancer today. So cancer is a devastating disease that is, uh, you know, the second leading cause of deaths worldwide. Uh, cancer actually is not a single disease. It's a group of uh, diseases that are characterized by uncontrolled growth and spread to other parts of the body. Now, uh, you know, human body contains around 200 different types of cells. And all of these 200 different types of cells that can give rise to 200 different types of cancers. Now, bodies of multicellular organisms like ours, they kind of live like an ecosystem or societies. And the cells, which are the basic units of life, they are the members of these societies. So they have responsibilities. So each cell in our body has different responsibility. So and they interact with each other, they signal to each other. All the cells in our body, they are programmed to die if it's needed for the good of the body. So every day, there are about 50 to 70 billion cells in our body that they die. Similarly, there are billions of cells that are made every single day. Now, there are specific cells that are supposed to die, and there are specific cells that are supposed to divide and multiply into newer cells. So every cell has a specific function. So what happens in cancer is that the cells that are supposed to die, they refuse to die due to changes in their genetic makeup. So the genetic makeup is the DNA, as the speaker earlier introduced to you. This is the one that we inherit from our pa pa parents. Half of them from mother, half of them from father. So this dictates which cell has to die and which has, cell has to proliferate. Some cells in our body, they proliferate through our, uh, throughout our life. For example, cells in my bone marrow or cells in my skin, cells in my gut or cells in my hair follicles. These are the cells that continue to divide throughout our life. There are, however, other cells, our brain cells, for example, they don't divide once the brain is developed. Right? So what happens in cancer is the cells that are supposed to die, they don't die anymore. Cells that are not supposed to divide or multiply, these cells keep on multiplying. So they, when they multiply, they make a growth called a tumor. This tumor can be of two types, a benign tumor. Benign tumor that stays at the place where it's formed. A mole on my hand, for example, is an example of benign tumor. A malignant tumor is the one that goes from the primary site of origin to different parts of the body. A tumor in the breast can go to liver, for example. Right? A tumor of the skin can go to lung, for example. So these, this is what is actually called a cancer. Right? So cancer actually, most of the cancers, they develop from a single cell. So a single cell, there is a change in a single cell. So this change will enable the cell to multiply more than normal, right? There might be another change that will make the cell to change its shape. Over the years, there might be another change that will make the cell to go to different parts of the body. So all of this happens during many different years. So cancer doesn't happen overnight. It happens over many different years. Uh, and by the time you know that there is a cancer, you already see that the first tumor that you can detect on x-ray contains 100 million different cells. So already, and when you can see, when you can feel the tumor, when it becomes palpable, it's about one centimeter in diameter. About one billion cells when you can actually feel the first tumor. So you know, this does, didn't happen overnight. This happened over many different years. And by the time, you know, patient ha dies, the tumor can be as big as, you know, uh, might contain one trillion cells, right? So cancer, because it takes many years to develop, it's like an example of a car, you know, you buy a new car, uh, there's no defect in it. You run it on a road for 10 years, all the defects accumulate, right? Similarly, our bodies, uh, they accumulate these genetic defects over the years. So, you know, uh, this graph actually shows the rate of prostate cancer uh, plotted against the age. And you can see as the age increases, the rate of the prostate cancer increases. Similarly, colon cancer and lung cancer, uh, before 45 years old, uh, before the age of 45, you see there are very few 
uh, cases of uh, these types of cancer. But as the age increases, the incidence, the rate of cancer increases, right? So what causes the cancer? So most of the cancers actually, about 80, 70, 80 percent of the cancers are caused by environmental factor and lifestyles. The biggest example is smoking. So during the Second World War, or after the Second World War, the cigarette consumption increased enormously because the American soldiers were given cigarettes as their ration. So they became addicted because of the nicotine. And when they went back, you know, the, you, see, you can see throughout the world the cigarette uh, consumption increased. What happened after that, around 20 years later, the cancers of the lung also increased. And this line runs parallel to the red line. That means it took the patients or the people who started smoking, it took them 20 years until they started getting lung cancer, right? And the blue graph shows the non-smoking related lung cancer. And you see that's very little, right? So this is another example how smoking can cause cancer. You know, if I take 100 people who have never smoked in their life, and say one out of those 100 people will develop lung cancer. Now if I take uh, those people who smoke one to five cigarettes, that 1% increases to eight in 100, five to 15, 12 in 100, 15 to 25 is 14, and if somebody smokes 20 or 100 people, I take 100 people who smoke more than 25 cigarettes a day, 27 of them will develop cancer, lung cancer. Right? So the relative risk increased from 1 to 27. So that's a 27-fold increase. That's huge. So there are other environmental factors or lifestyle choices. Alcohol can cause uh, lung cancer. Expo uh, alcohol can cause different types of cancer. Liver cancer included in that. Similarly, exposure to UV, X-ray, sunlight, exposure to infectious agent. We all know hepatitis C virus can cause liver cancer. Similarly, bacteria, there are some bacteria that grow in our stomach, they can cause stomach cancer, right? So cigarette smoke, for example, contains around 7,000 different chemicals. 69 of those chemicals can actually cause cancer. 69, right? So how do these environmental factors cause cancer? Well, they cause changes in the DNA. They cause mutations. So they cause changes in the structure of the proteins, for example. So this is an example that, you know, if this is a normal cell that contains chromosomes. So if there is a change, so there's a yellow change that's followed by green change, that's followed by red change and pink change. So now the cell that contains four or five different changes, that can multiply, that can divide on its own without any social constraints that normal cells in our body have. So this cell can actually change shape. It can go to different parts of the bodies. And then it can cause, obviously, cancer. So how do you treat cancer? So the most common treatment for cancer are, you know, surgery and radiotherapy. So you remove the primary tumor. Where tumor you remove that part. But what happens is most of the patients are diagnosed when the cancer has already spread. So it has gone from the primary side to different parts of the body. So how do you treat that? You can't do uh, you know, surgery on different parts of the body. So what you do is you do systemic treatment. Systemic treatment, you give the drug orally or you give them intravenously. You give them tablets or you give them injections, right? And these are called chemotherapeutic drugs. So chemotherapeutic drugs, they kill the dividing cell, the multiplying cells indiscriminately. That is why cancer patients that are undergoing chemotherapy, they lose their hair. They have gut problems. They have skin rashes. They have neutropenia, means they, their blood is not for being formed properly because the bone marrow contains dividing cells, right? So to combat this, there is another latest treatment or way of treating uh, cancer is called targeted or personalized therapy. What you do in that is you take a particular protein that is mutated in cancer the cause of the cancer. So this protein is only present in cancer cell and not in the normal cells. So you treat, you inhibit the function of that protein and only the cancer cells will die and normal cells won't die. So 
One of the biggest problem with cancer treatment, uh, uh, however, is the drug resistance. So you treat a cancer patient with a drug, they initially respond, but the cancer comes back. Why it comes back? Because the, uh, the cancer cells, they become refractory to the treatment. They become resistant to the treatment. So how do they become resistant to treatment? There are many different mechanisms of this. I'm not going into detail. What I'm going to show you is two uh, main uh, kind of uh, ways uh, cancer becomes resistant. One is the target uh, alteration. So let's suppose this is your drug and this is the protein it goes and binds. Right? So what cancer cells do, they change the structure of this protein so this drug cannot, can no longer bind to the, its target. So this is a very common way. But the most common way of drug resistance is called drug efflux. So cancer cells, they express or they overexpress pumps at their surface. So what these pumps do, as soon as the drug enters the cell, they pump it out. So the drug is not able to reach its target. So if it's not able to reach its target, it cannot kill the cancer cell, right? So, so when I moved to Pakistan in 2014, we set up a cancer therapeutic lab at LAMS and we, we started, you know, uh, on, a, on a project to discover drugs that can overcome multidrug resistance. So we, we screened drugs from the plant sources, we screened we, drugs that were synthetically synthesized uh, at LAMS and, you know, in addition to that, we also did in silico modeling. So what we did uh, with one of my colleagues is that we made the cancer cells on computer. So you can take the proteins that are involved in cancer and then you can make their models, uh, their connections with each other on the computer. And then you can see how you can treat those cancer cells on the computer and if it works on the computer, you take it to the, uh, you take it to the cells. So, for the first part, we discovered a drug called SSC15206. So this is a compound which is at very early stage of development. But what it does actually is that it overcomes multidrug resistance. So this is the structure of the compound and it kills breast cancer, leukemia, colorectal, lung, cervical, ovarian, different types of cancers very, at very low drug concentration. So now, you know, what this drug, drug does, it, it inhibits microtubules. So microtubules are the structural components of the cell. You can consider this building. So it has the steel in the concrete. So steel provides the structural stability to the whole building. Similarly, microtubules in the cells, they provide structural stability. So this is exactly like this. So this steel provides the structural stability to the cells. And this structural stability is especially important when cells are dividing into two. So one cell is making two cells. So what this drug does is it inhibits those structures. So you can see the lines on the left side that disappear when we treat the cells with the drug. So that means the cells cannot divide into two cells, right? So they ultimately die. Now, this animation shows how a normal drug kills. So you add a drug to the cell, the drug goes and binds to its target. So the red, red is the target, green is the drug, and this whole thing is the cell. Uh, the green drug goes and binds to the red target and the cell actually dies. So what happens in multidrug resistance is that the cancer cells, they overexpress these pumps. So as soon as the drug goes in, it comes out it's not able to bind to its target. So the drug goes in, the drug go, comes out. But what happens with this is that, you know, the resistance developed against one drug, but now it will pump out any drug that you will give it to. So the black drug, the uh, purple drug will also come out. So we call this multi-drug resistance. So this cancer cell cannot be killed by these drugs. So what our drug is doing actually, that in the presence of, you know, these efflux pumps that pump out normal drugs, our drug can actually go and bind. So this pink drug can go and bind to the target. So normal drugs that are currently used, they are being pumped out by the cancer cell. But our drug can go inside the cancer cell 
and inhibit the growth and kill the cell ultimately right so the idea here is that you know we make such drugs that can overcome drug resistance we make them synthetically and we make them we, you know pakistan is a rich source of biodiversity we have plants that are not present everywhere we have animals a bacteria that might not be present anywhere so we want to get compounds from those plants bacteria and fungi and then use them to overcome multi drug resistance similarly as i mentioned earlier we are making cells on the computer so we can test the drugs we can screen the drugs on the computer and then we can take them to the laboratory to test that whether they can kill the cells or not so this is the two papers that we've recently published describing the work that i just described so thank you for your attention